Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at setting up and installing GitHub Desktop. Now, what is GitHub Desktop? Well, originally we first of all created our repo on our GitHub website here, which is great. We have the repo here, we can see the files, but how do we actually go about adding our Godot project and how, we do, how do we go about actually tracking whatever changes have been made? Well, we could click on the add file button right here and upload our Godot project, which would work. But then whenever we make changes to that project on our computer, uh, GitHub would not know those changes have been made because it's not connected to that specific directory on a computer at all. Okay, it's basically us uploading to Google Drive or uploading to some server. Um, so what we need is a piece of software that is installed on our computer that can detect those changes that have been made to whatever directory we have assigned and then be able to commit those changes and then push them to the repo here on GitHub. Now GitHub thankfully has a piece of software that does exactly that which is known as GitHub Desktop. Okay, um, You can find this by going to desktop.github.com forward slash download or just google GitHub Desktop. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click on the download button right here and that is going to begin the download process. Okay, so once you have installed GitHub Desktop and have opened it up, you should be presented with a screen that looks not exactly similar to mine just because I already have some repos attached to it, but you should have generally the top buttons up here. Now the first step is going to be connecting GitHub Desktop to our GitHub account. So what we're going to do is go up to File, then down to Options, and then in Options we want to go to Accounts and click Sign into GitHub.com. Okay, we can then click Continue with Browser, and this is going to take us to GitHub, where we can then choose to continue as this account right here, and then that should then take us back to GitHub Desktop. Okay, and there we go. So now if we go back to File, Options, you should see that you are now logged in to your GitHub account. Now, something else we want to do is then go down to where we have the Git um, option right here. And this is where we are going to basically choose the name that we are going to commit with. Okay, because every time you commit changes to a repo, you need to have a name and an email. Um, now, you can just specify your name right here, um, basically just so we know who is actually committing these changes. Um, and the reason why it's separate to the account is because you can have, I guess, different names for different computers as well. Um, so just add your name here and just add your email, although it should be done automatically for you upon logging in. But if you wanted to have a more specific name, um, you can change that here. So we're going to click save. And then the next step we want to do is connect our repo from GitHub to our GitHub desktop app. So what I'm going to do is at the top left corner, I'm going to go file and then go down to clone repository. Okay. Clone repository basically means we are getting a repository that we already have created and basically cloning it on our computer. Okay. We are basically pulling that repo, storing it on our computer and then keeping track, keeping note of where that repo is. So when any changes have been made to it, this app will be able to notify us and have those changes be committed. So what we're going to do is select our repo. So I'm going to select my first Godot project right here. We can then choose a path. So I recommend creating a folder called GitHub on your computer and storing all of your GitHub projects there. Okay. So we can then click on clone and that is going to go through the process of cloning that. So downloading the repo from GitHub, um, downloading those files and storing them in that directory. And then we should see here that we have this screen. So, um, the way this screen works is on the top left, you can see we have our current repository set to my first Godot project. We can then see a list of all the changes that have been made. Now, so far, we have not made any changes to this repo, so that's why it is empty. We can also click on history, and this is going to show us a list of all the original changes and pushes that have been made. So if you remember, we have our initial commit right here that was made by me automatically. Um, we can click on that. We can then see the, the list of all the files that have been changed. So the .git ignore, and then we can see also then the changes here. So it's very similar to the GitHub website. Now, when we go back to changes, um, whenever there are files listed here, we can click on those and see the changes displayed here in the center. Uh, but right now, let's actually go ahead and look at our project inside of our directory. So the easy way of doing this is by right clicking on the top left where we have our repo name and going to show in Explorer. 
This is going to open up our file explorer. You can see we are at github forward slash my first Godot project. And inside of here, we have our dot git ignore. So we can open this up. Um, and if we were to go ahead and make changes to this, those changes would appear here. We can then commit those and push those to the repo. But we don't really want to modify our git ignore here at all. So instead, what we're going to do is let's just say we want to create a new file. So I'm just going to right click here, go new. And I'm just going to create a text document. And this one is just going to say, um, what's call this one? Example file. Let's go inside of this and just say, this is a file uh, testing out um, our commit. Okay, just something like that. Very simple. So we can save that. And then if we go back into GitHub desktop, you'll notice that, oh, we have one change. And that is example file.txt. We can then see a list of all the lines that have been added. So we've added two new lines. Um, and then what we can do is if, for example, we've finished working on our project for a while, we might want to go, all right, I've worked on this project for a couple hours. Now it's time to push our changes. Well, what we can do is go down to the bottom here. We can enter in a commit message. So this can be, for example, um, added example file. You can be a bit more specific if you have a bunch of other changes made. Um, you can also add a description, which is going to be a much more detailed overview of the changes that have been made. But do note that if we go to history, you can see here, um, it's only the name that you'll see. Okay, so don't make your names too vague, try and add descriptive words to your commit messages as that is what you're going to be seeing. The description is if you want to go into more detail, okay, be more specific. So once we've done that, we can click commit to main. Uh, main is essentially the main repo branch that everyone's going to be committing to. But this has not done anything to our repo, okay? A commit is only a local change, okay? So we're only making a change locally on our computer. If, for example, we wanted to push this to the repo, then we would have to go to the push origin button up here. You can see it has one commit waiting. So it will push to origin, and that is going to basically push that change to the repo on the GitHub website. Now, if we go over to the history tab, you can see here we have our new commit um, applied. Okay, so in the next lesson, we are going to be going over connecting our Godot project to GitHub. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all then. Welcome back, everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at how we can add our Godot project to the repo, okay? Uh, so you may already have a Godot project you've been working on that you want to uh, connect to a Godot repo, or you might be wanting to create a brand new project. So what I'm going to ask you to do first is, first of all, locate your Godot project or, lo or create a new one and then open it up inside of the file explorer. So on the left-hand side here, I have my GitHub repo. Remember, we have the .git ignore and we have that example file that we created. So this file directory is where we are storing everything we want to change and upload to our GitHub repository. On the right-hand side, this is inside of my Godot project itself, okay? We have the Godot folder, we have assets, we have our project file and everything else. Now, you may notice that when you create a new Godot project, you have these two files. You have .git attributes and .git ignore. Okay, Godot already knows that people are going to be using GitHub for their projects. So thankfully, they already include some of these files. But what you notice is that with the Godot's built in Git ignore file, it's pretty simplistic, okay? If we look at this one compared to the one that we created with GitHub, you can see that the GitHub one features much more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete the one that we have in our existing Godot project, since we don't want to bother about um, merging the two together. Uh, you'll also notice that we have a .git attributes file. Now, this one basically just determines how um, certain files based on their file type are going to be merged. Okay, we don't really need to worry about this too much as uh, we can just keep the default one Godot has for us already. Um, so we're not going to explore too much about that. And secondly, the way we can add our project is by just selecting all the files and folders inside of our Godot project and dragging them over. So I'm going to drag them into my repository here. And now our Godot repo is going to essentially act as our project file. So if we want to edit this, we'll have to open up Godot and then open up the My First Godot Project folder as, that's which, as, as that is what contains our Godot uh, files. So if I go back into GitHub Desktop, you'll see now we have a large list of all these files that have been added 
and or change. But since we've dragged over a lot, we're basically adding all of these files here. Now, just like with the gignore, we can click on a file to see its um, content. So if I click on the license here, we can see the license content. Um, if we click on images, you can even see what the images are, which is pretty cool. So you can see exactly what assets you are importing. Um, if we go down here, you can see if we have an MP3 file, um, these cannot be changed. Okay, binary files, um, since they don't really work in lines as everything else here, you can see um, is basically, or aside from images, um, they work in a line format. Since binary files don't really have lines, they're just one big block of data, we can't really display them here. Okay, and that is because Git is originally designed for programming and programming works in lines of code. Um, so that is generally the format that uh, the software likes the best, okay? But it also works for MP3 files um, and pretty much any file type, okay? Just if you're trying to merge two files together, it is going to be able to do that fairly easily with text because as you can see, everything is divided up into lines, whereas with something such as MP3s or binary files, it's gonna have trouble merging those, but you're not really gonna be making little changes to bits of an audio file, okay? You're always gonna be overriding it. So that's not something we really have to worry about um, in Godot. So now what we can do is go down, we can give this a commit message. So I am just going to call this one um, added Godot project. We could give a description if we want, but not really much more to explain. And then I'm gonna click on commit to main. Okay, and that's gonna go for the process of committing all these changes. So compiling that into a single commit. And then once that is done, you can see we can click on push origin. And this basically means we are gonna push that commit to our repo, okay? It's pushing it to the GitHub server on the internet. So that may take some time depending on how many files you have and the file size, but as you can see, there we go, it is now done. And if we go over to history, you can see here we have added Godot project, and it is of course gonna show us all the changes that have been made. And if we even go back to GitHub on the website and we refresh our repo, you can see now that we have everything added here, okay? So we have our files, we have our folders that we can open up and explore. So you can see now how this sort of acts as a file explorer, okay? We can go in, we can navigate through all the different assets. We can even open up the images here and they get displayed nicely, okay? Um, so if you did want to share this around with people, they can easily jump in, see your code, um, especially if it is a public repo, okay? People can see how you structure your projects, how you write your code, and everything that is involved. Uh, now let's go over actually opening up this project in Godot, because we just copied over the files, but you know, if we open up that project, it's still gonna open up the original. So here I am inside of Godot, and what I'm gonna do is click on the import button right here, and I'm gonna navigate over to my GitHub folder. So I'm just gonna go over to the correct drive, go to GitHub, and then you can see here we have my first Godot project. So I'm gonna select that, which is our GitHub repo, and click select this folder. Click import and edit, and that is then gonna open up that Godot project. And there we go. So now any changes that we make to this project if we go over to GitHub Desktop, they should appear over here in the change list. But since we haven't made any changes just yet, um, we don't have to worry about that. But in the next lesson, we are going to be going over looking at how we can make changes to our project, how we can then push them here inside of GitHub Desktop, and then in the future, looking at what happens if two people are collaborating on the project and they make um, changes that intersect with one another, which are known as merge conflicts. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all then. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at making changes to our Godot project and seeing those changes before we commit them. So what we are going to do is we are going to look at creating new files, modifying files and deleting files. So what we're gonna do first of all is go ahead and create a new file. So let's just say we wanna create a new script here. I'm just gonna go ahead, right click, create new script and I'm just gonna call this one simple. Um, I'm just gonna call it simply uh, test script, just so we can see how it appears inside of uh, GitHub Desktop. So we got our test script right here, which has the default code written out for us. Now let's look at it. what happens if we go ahead and perhaps modify an existing script. So I'm just gonna go ahead to one of the scripts we have here, and let's just say we want to, for example, add in a new line of code. So let's say over here, we want to put in a print line. So we might go print, and then this could say uh, add 
gravity. Now, how about deleting a line? Well, let's go to a, another script. So here we can just maybe delete this function right there and save that. Okay, now let's go over into GitHub Desktop again and you'll see we have these three changes. Now you can see that two of them have this yellow icon, which means it has been modified. Green means it is new, and if it is red, that means it has been deleted. Let's actually go ahead and delete a file, just so we can see that. So let's we'll go assets, um, and let's just delete one of these random tiles here. Okay, we'll just go ahead and delete that file. So if I save this and go back into GitHub Desktop, you'll see now we have deleted a file. Okay, we have the PNG file here, which has been deleted. Um, and also it's import uh, metadata as well. So you can see here, when we click on the uh, script, we can see that new line of code that has been added and it shows us with this little plus icon, which is very handy. Um, same thing for the other script where we have deleted uh, that chunk of code, it is in red. So we can easily see what has been added and what has been deleted. And of course this script here has been modified as well, or has been created. So we can go ahead and give a commit message. Let's just say uh, testing out GitHub. You know, probably want to be a bit more specific if you are, um, of course, creating scripts and modifying them. We can click commit to main. And then once that is done, we can click push origin. And that is going to then push those changes to the repo. And then if we go to history, click on testing out GitHub, we can see all of these changes right here. Okay, so you always are going to have this large history that you can go back and check. So if there are any issues in the future, or if somebody accidentally deleted a file or modified a certain line of code, you can always go back and look at how um, that change happened and where exactly it occurred. Now, as a bit of a challenge, if you are following along, I want you to go ahead and set up your Godot project inside of GitHub if you haven't already done that. And then I want you to go ahead and begin creating some commits, changing some files, committing those to the repo.